obviously we're very excited and very grateful that uh, a man such as Rob is making some time for us here. So without further ado, it's Robert Trujillo. <laughs> Thank you. I just want to ask you first about something that you've been involved in for the last couple of years and must have taken up a lot of your time, which is uh, the Jacko movie. Basically, uh, I, Jacko, for me, you know, we all have our heroes and people we look up to as players. And uh, Jocko was probably the player for me growing up. I had the good fortune of seeing him play uh, four times as a young teenager. I was very lucky to be just old enough to go to these shows and witness all this mm -hmm. and, um, and experience jazz rock at it, in its prime. Mm -hmm. It's something that I became very passionate about. I realized that um, it just sort of occurred to me that this film was not going to be made unless I took command of it and, and uh, embraced it and adopted it. And, and that means financially, yeah, yeah. which really, really kicked my butt. It's still kicking my butt. And did you study jazz at college? Is that right? Yeah, I, I went to music school in uh, uh, 1984. And um, it was called the Dick Grove School of Music. It doesn't exist anymore, and um, I made a lot of great friends there. You know, it was really important to jam with those incredible musicians and um, take that journey with them, uh, even beyond the education. Um, the, uh, the thing for me was always baby steps. Always thinking, not like for the, not the big stage, but just thinking, you know, short-term goals and then achieving them, and then what you find is what, as time goes on, you know, you end up kind of exceeding and going beyond those short-term goals. Um, it, same thing kind of happened with Metallica in a weird way. I remember uh, see, you know, being on tour with them in 93 with Suicidal Tendencies. And, and, you know, they were, the Black Album was huge. Sandman was a big hit. We were opening for them and just thinking, man, I could, could never, you know, mm in a band like that they're so big they're, it's like untouchable even like when you're on tour with them it just seemed untouchable it was like they'd have their little dinners with candlelight and you know and and then they'd fly out on their private jet moving up to doing a band of that size mm -hmm. you know i was just interested to know how how things change in terms of I don't know, like your performance, or when you go to that scale and it's literally right. that big, that there's that many thousand people. Well, some people don't translate well on a big stage. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a whole art to that. There's um, what I found from anybody that I've ever played with, you know, whether it's Hetfield or Mike Muir from Suicidal, or the minute these guys get on stage, you become someone that's different. You know, you kind of go into this other personality or this alter ego and it takes you and, and you just you're floating you know it's like magic you're you're there you're in it it's probably similar to an athlete or a boxer you know you get in the ring and then all of a sudden you're focused i was talking to to, to some of your, your people earlier um on the staff and i was talking about uh again personalities and how to manage yourself and manage other personalities. And, you know, like I was saying, it's really important because you can be the best player in the world, you know, but if you have a prima donna attitude, you know, people aren't going to want to deal with you, you know. And sometimes you got to kind of, you know, take a little bit of a beating with certain personalities, but, uh, you know, it's important to understand that just because, uh, um, you know, creative people are complicated. And like I said, I've been through a lot of incredibly gifted, talented, creative individuals, a lot of writers who've, who've really been a pain in the butt. And you've got you've to navigate that terrain. And then it kind of usually gets better. <laughs> I 
was the song that I think I won over Metallica with when I auditioned uh, for the band. But um, Battery I knew because I had uh, recorded a version of that song with Dave Lombardo from Slayer for a compilation record. So th that was a good song to know because a lot of the guys that were auditioning um, didn't, didn't know that one. So <laughs> so it brings back memories. Thanks for choosing that one. Uh, hi, Rob. Um, Hello. I'm, I'm just... Um I'm wondering what your view is on like um, on like how difficult it is uh, for musicians to kind of like make a successful career these days as, oppo mm -hmm. as opposed to like 30 ish years ago. So in this day and age, you can get so much done with incredible home studios and um, make your music and celebrate it and present it to the world. But don't try to pursue it for the purposes of, you know, I mean, it's great. Metallica, that is great. Awesome. But, you know, it took a lot to get there. And and not to say that it can't happen. It can happen. But you want to always pursue your music for the love of the art and your music. So I just want to say thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. Yeah. It's been great. Yeah. I, I was I was very nervous. It's it's they're really hard tracks, <laughs> and to have not just you know like all the heads department who managed to sneak in here, and then like a couple of bass tutors who've known me for like four years now, but like you know Metallica's own bass player. And yeah, that was pretty nerve wracking. Um, it gives you a real insight into what different stages of playing as a musician are like, and more importantly, I guess what different types of career are like. You know, so, so Rob, for example, he hasn't just played with Metallica, he's played with all these different bands and kind of still does work with, you know, kind of all these different people. It's very cool to have that kind of insight.